These are failed design ideas, yet they were modeled from a design which actually works. Why does the design of a bird keep it in flight, and why did imitations of that design fail? Perhaps these designers needed to examine the reasoning behind their design decisions more closely. Perhaps it would have helped if they had known the reasoning behind this model. If only nature had provided a record of design reasoning. Hi, I'm Diane McCurley at Rank Xerox Europark. Together with the Open University, we are studying design rationale in use. Like in the flying machine example, user interface design can also benefit from constructing records of design reasoning. If we know the rationale for a design, then we can understand why it was designed the way it was. This video will demonstrate the way we use design rationale. It will show you how our approach can support normal design activities. But first, what do we mean by design rationale? As a design idea is being developed, much of the reasoning is implicit in the designer's minds. To represent design reasoning explicitly, we use a semi-formal notation called QOC, which encourages designers to organize a set of design considerations into questions, which identify design issues, options, which provide possible design solutions, and criteria for assessing and comparing the options. Broken lines indicate that the option is negatively assessed against a criterion, while solid lines show which criteria are supported by the option. We have used design rationale and the notation QOC to support a number of design activities. Here are some examples. Throughout the design process, we have used QOC to communicate design ideas, to reflect upon issues at design reviews, to document the reasoning behind design decisions, and as a structure to organize other artifacts of the design process. At face-to-face -face design meetings, typical activities can be identified. We make rough notes for ourselves. We spend time thinking, talking in small groups, or addressing the whole design team. We bring private work to the design meeting for discussion and take public documents away to work with in our own time. Yeah. These kinds of activities generate artifacts throughout the design process, which we incorporate into QOC records. Some of the artifacts generated and used at our design meetings are storyboards, personal notes, collective notes, fax documents, whiteboard sketches, rough QOC, computer printouts, and computer demonstrations. From the information contained in these artifacts of design, as well as from memory of the design meeting, we are able to document important design issues using the semi-formal QOC notation. For example, this record describes the design considerations surrounding the issue of searching within a hypermedia interface. The issue is represented by this question, how to search for information. Two possible options were suggested, use an agent to look for the information or have the user search through drawers. As shown by the criteria, 
the first option is good because it provides an expert opinion and limits the search to a relevant subset. On the other hand, the second option ensures thorough coverage of the material and provides the user with an opportunity for browsing. Even though the development of the design idea was much more chaotic, opportunistic, and creative, QOC enables us to represent the reasoning behind the idea in a more organized manner. Taking this one step further, we are exploring how QOC might help to organize the fragmented artifacts of design. Using an off-the-shelf software package, we have embedded various artifacts of design within a QOC record. For example, this option summarizes an idea which was explored using the sketch in a design meeting. Although the whiteboard has since been erased, that sketch was preserved here through frame-grabbed video. Other artifacts of design may be too large to display on the QOC record. However, these two icons give access to scanned-in documents which contributed to the design. For example, we can open the storyboard by clicking on its icon. In summary, as our design team has become accustomed to using QOC, we often find ourselves communicating with each other in terms of this semi-formal notation. These records have also been useful when reflecting on the state of the design at review meetings and when revisiting earlier design ideas. Further, we have documented our design reasoning as both online and paper records. And finally, the online QOC diagrams have provided a means of organizing our accumulating artifacts of the design process. Understanding and capturing the reasoning behind our design decisions has made a valuable contribution to our interface design project. We will also have left behind an important record of our design reasoning for others to use.